celebrity true or false you can't handle the truth <laughs> there you go that's the that's the that's the production value oh, okay you. okay very good you've been around you i'm sure you're impressed by the production value uh first up for you gerald mccraney true or false you dropped out of ole miss and then you worked in Louisiana oil fields on offshore rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. Is that true or false? I've worked both onshore and offshore rigs. I was what's called a mud logger, um, and that's sort of a half-assed geologist. You keep track of the drill rate and the material that you're drilling through, and you determine whether there's an oil-bearing oil sand right. and things like that. But I worked half the year in the oil field and the other half the year in a repertory company in New Orleans. And that, <laughs> but working in the oil patch uh, allowed me to afford getting an acting career started. Well, I'm, were you the only one working in the oil fields pulling oh, yeah. such double duty? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did, did anybody who worked in the oil fields with you, you know, get come watch you and your other job? Did they come check you out? It's an interesting thing. The first job I had in the oil field was actually working on a survey crew for an oil company. Uh-huh. And um, one of the guys who was on that crew with me uh, had a son who wound up out here in Southern California and got in touch with me yes. when I was doing Major Dad. And I had him come out and How cool sit in the that? audience and, and uh, be there for the filming of one of our episodes of Major Dad. Well, there, and another guy on that crew actually uh, would hold book for me when we were finished with our work for the day. He would hold book for me, do my audition scenes for the rep company that I wound up joining in New Orleans. So, and that's what uh, some very you, nice people. And that's what ha- helped get you started. Oh I yeah, imagine. yeah. But some great guys in the oil patch down there. Uh, next one, true or false? You hold the distinction of being the last guest star to meet Matt Dillon in a gunfight and gun smoke. Is that not true a gunfight? A showdown uh, where we both go for our guns. There was other gunplay in the rest of the episode, but yes. I was the last one to draw against Matt Dillon in the, the last episode of the 20th year. How'd that turn out? Badly for me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't turn out well. But, no. you, so, but you were the last... But one. I did beat him. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, we're doing the rehearsal, and I had practiced drawing the gun, mm-hmm. so I didn't look stupid doing it. Yes. But I could only do it at one speed. And we're rehearsing the thing, and Arness is there. And I pulled the gun out, and he was just about to touch his. And he looked at the director and said, It's a good 20 year run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. at, least, at least he took it in good humor, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, that, that cast, they were such great people. Um, the first episode I did of Gunsmoke, mm-hmm. I had a scene with Milburn Stone, mm-hmm. and I was nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof. Mm-hmm. And the scene itself wasn't working, and Milburn Stone thought that it wasn't working as well. Right. And he just said to the director, let's just stop for a minute. And he took me aside, and we started improvising the scene back and forth, and we came back, and Milburn said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Just go ahead and roll the camera. Go for it. And we went for it, and it worked. And But he uh, sensed my discomfort with the scene and made it work for me. Uh, and everybody on that show was that way. Next up uh, for Celebrity True or False with Gerald McCraney. True or False, you were up for the role of Luke Duke on Dukes of Hazard. Is that true or false? Well, in a way, I did an early uh, audition for it. And they asked me to do it again and do it in a really broad way. And mm-hmm. I just... I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think they wanted a really redneck, dumbass Southerner (laughs) in that audition process. And uh, being, uh, you know, a dumbass Southerner, I rather resented that. (laughs) You didn't say I've done repertory. Come Uh, on now. Okay. So then then you were not right for the role is what you're saying. No, I wasn't. Okay. How did you wind up with Simon and Simon then? How did that, because that was, that was your first long term gig. Um, there. a pilot for a series called Gypsy Warriors yes. that um, Phil DeGuerre had created. And they did their pilot, and I was up for one of the, the two leads in it. Um, but they decided to go with some guy named Selleck instead. I don't know why. Um, but 
Anyway, the, the same guy created Simon and Simon. Yes. And they had already hired Jameson Parker. And they had gone through everybody else in Hollywood and New York, and nobody quite uh, fit in. So, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel, they came to me <laughs> and asked if I would come over and read with Jameson. And I did. And I think that was on a Wednesday. And the following Monday, I was in Florida shooting the first pilot that we did for it. And then so, you did about, what, eight years? That eight one? years. Eight yeah. years that was on. And then you went to major dad directly from that right yeah i think i had three months between simon and simon oh. and major dad um and the producer uh, started out as line producer and wound up executive producer of simon and simon was yeah. the guy who came up with the concept of major dad so it, it it all worked out perfectly why do you think major dad worked gerald mccraney i think people at that time were ready to embrace the military. 1989 through 93. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do a show like that is I had family people who were career military. And in television throughout the 70s, all you saw was stuff that was like uh, about the crazed Vietnam veteran. Well, I knew a lot of people who served in Vietnam and you know, they were not the crazed Vietnam veteran, and they weren't Rambo. They were just ordinary people mm -hmm. who had an extraordinary job to do, and they did it. And uh, I wanted to sort of represent that on television. And that's why you think it worked as well as it yeah, did. Yeah, and I think people were ready for that. And people are still coming up to you and talking to you about that yeah. to this yeah. day. Joe McCraney here on The Rich Eisen Show.